Hello everyone, my name is Alberto, welcome back to my channel. This is the start, hopefully, of a new series of videos where I'm going to talk about the world rarest fibers and sewing slash embroidery slash crafting techniques, obviously more related to fashion, from all around the world. Personally, I love to learn about all of those things. I think they're so cool and inspirational and I feel like it's always great to learn about our history as a planet and a civilization and that it enriches us so much more. So for the first video of this series I decided to talk about byssus. Byssus is also called sea silk most of the times and it's a fiber produced by a large bivalve called Pinna nobilis. It's a large mollusk that looks like this, that lives on the Mediterranean seafloor. It can reach up to four feet in height, and it feeds by filtering the water like, for example, mussels or oysters. To attach itself to rocks on the seabed, it produces a filament made mostly of keratin, like hair and nails, called byssus. This fiber is present along human history since the Iron Age. We have mentions of byssus on the Rosetta Stone and in ancient Egypt, although now we think that what they called byssus and used to wrap mummies is actually linen. There's a lot of mentions from ancient Greece as well, where the sophist author Alciphron first records sea wool in his Galenus to Crichton letter. In Rome, as well, several sources mention lana pinna, or pinna wool. Emperor Diocletian's Edict on Maximum Prices lists it as a valuable material, a textile only worn by the ruling class. The 9th century Persian geographer Estacri notes that a sea wool robe costs more than a thousand gold pieces and records its mythical source. We also have records from China talking about a fiber made from water sheep that they also called mermaid silk. These records are sprinkled all around human history. We don't know exactly when it started being officially called with the English term sea silk, but there are a lot of mentions, especially during Victorian times, it's even mentioned in Jules Verne's 1870 novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, who of the Nautilus wore clothes made out of byssus. So this fiber has always been established as very rare, incredibly expensive, and always reserved for the elite. Due to the complexity of sourcing the material and the labor-intensive process required to refine it and make it into a thread, during the 20th century, during the excitement, about fancy new synthetic fibers, the enthusiasm for byssus slowly died out. Although Italian fascists tried to find some uses for byssus due in part to some of the esoteric properties it has, but we'll talk about this later. Throughout the years, unfortunately, Pinna nobilis has become threatened to extinction due to pollution, intensive fishing, and this urged the European Union to class it as an at-risk species and create laws to protect it from being harvested for consumption and for its fiber. Nowadays, there is only one woman allowed to produce business in the world. In the island of Sant'Antioco, in Sardinia, Chiara Vigo is the last master of sea silk, or at least this is what she claims. She's an interesting woman. Although happy to show everyone who goes visit the origins of Byssus and how it's created, she even created a small museum about it that now is closed due to some dispute with the Italian government. She's a peculiar character. If you watch some interviews of her, she has a sort of haughty attitude, which I find very amusing, because her whole vibe is that she's a master, a teacher, but doesn't want to teach anyone. Mind you, she has her reasons, but nonetheless, I find it incredibly entertaining. 
Unfortunately, due to COVID restriction, I have no possibility to go visit her right now, but it's definitely on my bucket list. You can find online videos of people visiting her and showing her workspace, and it's truly fascinating. Chiara asks no money. She says this art is sacred to her, and she dedicated her whole life to it. One of her cardinal virtues is that business cannot be sold. She has strict rules in accordance with Italian law about the maximum amount of fibers she can harvest every year, so not to harm the animal too much, because in the past, obviously, the whole animal would have been fished out and killed. She then cleans the fiber, washes it several times to get rid of all the salt, and then she starts carding and removing all small debris. Now this is where the weirdness about Bissus comes into play. According to Chiara, she learned all her craft from her grandmother, all the practices, and that includes her pact with the sea. It's witchcraft. She's a sea witch. This is implied, but never actually said, for obvious reasons, but also because her practices seem to involve a lot of things from the Bible. She has prayers, songs, and her process includes activating the byssus with her voice. <coughs> Sounds familiar? Now, to be clear, I'm not making fun of her. In fact, all of these practices, including the pagan, but not really, rituals, that mix together Christianity and older religions are an ancient part of the history of Italy and many other countries. And they're not to be mocked. In fact, I think they're quite fascinating and they deserve more recognition. Back to the original topic, after these sacred rituals, Chiara does produce and spin byssus. If it's actually her voice that makes it look like that or not, it's not for us to judge. What we know is that the spun fiber lights up when it's in the sun, a sparkly golden thread, and it's beautiful. Byssus can be dyed. Chiara uses only natural dyes, and only ones that are mentioned in the Bible. Purple, deep red, burgundy, and gold. She says burgundy is the hardest one. It takes 30 days and 2 moons for the shells used to release the color. She then works the byssus in different ways, mainly weaving, but also with embroidery. Recently, the Museum of Basel in Switzerland, that is collecting data and studies on byssus, informed the public that there are actually two more women in Sant'Antioco that produce byssus. Sisters Assuntina and Giuseppina Pes are two more known byssus masters. Now, this contradicts Chiara's claim of being the only master left. The museum also said and I quote, she invented with an extraordinary imagination her own story of sea silk and spinning it tirelessly and to the delight of all media on and on and on. In 2013, Efizia Muroni, a hundred-year-old sea silk master weaver nicknamed La Signora del Bisso, or the Lady of Bissus, died. Does this leave only Chiara and the Pes sisters then? Or are there others? Is this ancient tradition going to continue? We don't know. So, to conclude, Byssus does have an amazing history. It looks beautiful, but it comes from a living creature. And like all animal fibers, ethics come into question. Should it be continued? I think so. At least not as an actual production. As long as there are rules protecting the animal population, it can be done. So maybe we should all embrace Chiara Vigo's rules and keep Bisso as something that will never be ours, just a gift from the sea. So guys, this was a little bit about the story and current position of Bissus in the world. I hope this was interesting and useful for you. I didn't want to go too much in depth with some of the technical aspects, for example, or historic, because there really is so much. So it was just to give you an idea of what the sea silk actually entails. I hope you liked the video. I hope it was interesting for you. 
I really would like to keep going with this series because there's so many stories like this one that need to be told because many people don't know about these things. So hoping you liked it, please leave a like, subscribe, leave me comments if you have any questions, I'll try to reply to them as soon as possible and in the best way possible. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.